Let's do two quick examples um, of questions involving bearings and angles of elevation and depression. The first example here is ship A leaves a harbour travelling at 5 kilometres an hour on a bearing of south 40 degrees west. Ship B leaves at the same time at 7 kilometres per hour on a bearing of south 50 degrees east. After two hours, how far apart are the ships? Okay, for all of these types of questions, the very first thing that you always must, must do is draw a diagram. So I've got my harbour. Let's put my harbour over here, and I'm going to label it H. Then, ship A is travelling at 5 kilometres an hour on a bearing of south 40 degrees west. So what does south 40 degrees west mean? It means I start south, and then I swing 40 degrees west, and this is the direction that ship A is travelling in. Ship B is travelling in a direction of south 50 degrees east. So I start south and I swing 50 degrees east. And that's the direction that ship B is travelling in. Hopefully you can see, if this is my south line, this angle is 40 degrees, this angle is 50 degrees, which means that together there is a right angle there between ships A and, ships, and ship B. Now, after two hours, how far, how far has each ship travelled? Well, ship A is travelling at five kilometres every hour. So after two hours, ship A is 10 kilometres away from harbour. Ship B is travelling at seven kilometres an hour. So after two hours, ship B is 14 kilometres away from harbour. <coughs> and I'm now interested in the distance between A and B, so this distance here. Now this uh, is now pretty straightforward because I've got a right angled triangle, I know two of the side lengths and I'm looking for the third side. So I'm just going to use good old Pythagoras where A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I call this X, the thing that I don't know, that is my hypotenuse or my C, so I get that X equals the square root of 10 squared plus 14 squared. And I'm going to put that into my calculator. The square root of 10 squared plus 14 squared equals 17.2. And that is in kilometers. There we go. So the steps I've taken to solve this is first of all, draw a diagram. Second of all, look for anything that's going to help me answer the question. In this case, look for the right angle. And then thirdly, use that information um, to write my formula that I'm going to use and solve for the unknown. Let's do one more example. This one involving angles of elevation and depression. Three collinear points, A, B and C, lie on horizontal ground in that order with a 20 metre flagpole placed at B. First of all, this word collinear, you will see it a few times in this unit. <coughs> And it means what it sounds like it means, co-linear. Linear meaning in a line and co meaning together or uh, co like like the prefix to all the other words you know that start with co. So co-linear means that all these three points lie together in the one line. Co-linear, same line. So three collinear points, A, B and C. So let's draw those. I've got A, B and C. They are collinear, they're all in the same line, and they're in that order, A, B, C, with a 20 meter flagpole placed at B. So I've got a 20 meter flagpole over there. The I've abbreviated here, the angle of elevation of the top of the pole is 22 degrees from A. That means from A, the angle that this path the top of the pole from A makes with the horizontal is 22 degrees. And it's got an angle of elevation of 16 degrees from C. So again, from C, 
I draw my horizontal, and then I draw my path from C to the top of the flagpole, and the angle that that makes is 16 degrees. And now the question is, how far is A from C? So I'm looking for this length here. In order to find that, again, same as last time, I'm going to look for the, the, the useful stuff in this picture that's going to help me work that out. So I notice immediately that because the angle of elevation is always from the horizontal and this flagpole is vertical, I've got two right angled triangles here. So what I can do is I can find this length here that I'm going to label x and this length here that I'm going to label y using trig and then I'm going to add them together to work out what the distance from A to C is. So let's start. If I've got X, well, I've got an angle here. I've got the opposite side and the adjacent side, which means I'm going to use tan. So I get that to find X, let's do this over here, tan of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. Or in this case, tan of 22 equals 20 over x. Now if you get stuck on solving this equation then please go back and watch my second um, introductory video to trig to remember how to solve equations where x is on the bottom of the fraction. Um, I'm going to rearrange this without showing much working. x is going to equal 20 over tan 22 and if I put that into my calculator, I get 49.5. Okay, let's now solve for y. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I've got my angle here. I've got my opposite and my adjacent. So again, I'm using tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Putting in the numbers tan of 16 equals 20 over y. I'm going to rearrange to get y equals 20 over tan 16. And if I put that into my calculator, that gives me 69.7. So altogether, this length here is going to be 49.5 plus 69.7. which gives me a total distance of 119 meters. That is rounded to the nearest meter.